Hi, I'm Richard Gibbons. I'm a sergeant with the Farmington Police Department, and one of my duties with the department is Bomb Squad. And we're here today, we're going to show you some of our equipment and what it can do. And we'll tell you. So I'm going to show you one of the robots that we have for the Bomb Squad. Uh, the robots have a lot of different functions that they perform. One of the things that they can do is they can approach uh, dangerous devices um, that we can use this uh, tool remotely in order to keep our officers and the community safe. Uh, it has a lot of different features on it. It has uh, grippers, it has a tool that we call a disruptor on it, multiple cameras, uh, it also has speakers and microphone, and we operate it remotely. Officer Lily White is back here on the controls. Um, we use this, like I said, for a variety of operations. We do it, we can support our SWAT team by using our cameras and our speakers and microphone, or we can use our grippers and claws and a bunch of tools that we can do in there to enter uh, facilities or into, like if we have a box or something that we think is suspicious, uh, we can use this to open that box up. So right now, Officer Lily White is configuring the arm to put it in a proper position to be able to pick up uh, what we commonly refer to as a pipe bomb. No need to be concerned for our safety. This is just a training item. All right, so now that Officer Lily White has secured the pipe bomb with the robot, he's gonna drop it into a thing we call a frag bag. Uh, it's made of Kevlar and it will help absorb uh, the effects of an explosion, uh, primarily reducing any fragmentation that might go off that would be dangerous to people. so it started raining outside so we're standing inside of our bay and we're taking a look at the controls for the robot that you were uh, looking at just a few minutes ago or maybe just a brief few seconds ago and you'll see officer Lily White is operating the robot told you about the different cameras that we have so now he's looking around at whatever's outside. Best part about being on the bomb squad is all the toys we get to play with. All right, so Officer Lily White is going to demonstrate our other uh, bomb squad robot that we have. This one has a name, this one's Woody. Uh, he came in a giant wooden crate when he was delivered to the department. Uh, we still have that crate around somewhere because we have to ship him back occasionally for servicing. Um, so this robot has a lot of the same capabilities as the other robot we uh, demonstrated. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger, can go to more places, can reach higher, uh, more tools and attachments. Uh, it's a little heavier duty and it also costs a lot more. This was the, the first big item that the Farmington Police Department received from federal grant money 
in order to, to start our bomb squad here in the Four Corners area. Um, so while I touch on that topic, while Officer Lillywhite is showing you some of the movements of the robot, I'll talk about what our responsibilities are as a bomb squad. Uh, like I keep referring to is that we're a Four Corners Regional Bomb Squad. Uh, we cover the, the four states in the Four Corners region. We've actually had call outs in all four states, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Um, so being federally funded, we're uh, governed by the FBI. All of our rules and regulations and our training requirements are, are um, guided by their federal guidelines. And we also receive a substantial amount of funding from the federal government through grants uh, to purchase our equipment. Uh, all of the members of our bomb squad are currently Farmington police officers. Uh, we have uh, four certified techs. Uh, Officer Lily White's getting ready to, to head to Alabama later this year for six weeks to attend the basic uh, bomb technician school. I've been on the bomb squad for nearly 12 years now, and I've been a certified tech since 2011. All right, so Sergeant Gibbons is going to demonstrate how we put on our bomb suit. Um, it doesn't save you from an explosion, but it does help keep us a little bit safer. All in all, uh, the suit weighs about 80 pounds, so uh, we try to put it on and, and wear it the shortest amount possible whenever we're out on a scene. So he's already got his pants on. Um, this usually takes two people to put on. Next thing that, that goes on is the helmet. This will fit nice and tight. Inside the helmet, there's flashlights so that if you're in a dark space and you need to see, uh, there's actually flashlights built into the helmet. Um, there's also a, a radio and a microphone so that they could talk to the other members of the team that are on the truck that are away from, from the device and let them know what's going on. That way they could kind of make a, a decision together rather than just one person at a time. So uh, next thing that we're going to put on is, is the jacket and this is pretty heavy. Like I said, it always takes two people uh, to get somebody into the suit. Hang tight. All right, now he's all set and ready to go to work. Uh, we'll just flip the visor down. Button should be on this side. Right here. All right. Now he's all set and ready to work safely. So lots of times a, a device will be in a tight little spot. It's a little bit hard to, to stand and move around inside of it. So part of the physical uh, fitness test that we do uh, to get on the bomb squad is prove that if, if you are knocked back onto your back or something like that, you're able to get up at, in the suit and uh, get back on your feet if, if you fall down. Part of it is you got pretty limited vision in that helmet as well. There he goes. All right, so this is our total containment vessel. We refer to it as the TCV. We put a small amount of explosives in this large cylinder here, and we would be able to detonate it safely uh, within the city limits and um, or anywhere. Like I said, we cover the Four Corners region. Um, earlier, I talked about our bomb squad members. So we currently have seven team members, four of which are certified, which means we have three people on our squad that are waiting to go to school. Uh, it's kind of an extensive wait list. Um, we, cover, we cover a wide range of different types of calls. Our primary thing is, because we're the bomb squad, uh, is we respond to explosive threats, explosive devices, but we also do re explosive recoveries. Uh, that's probably the majority of the calls that we cover in the Four Corners region here is uh, people find dynamite, blasting caps, other types of explosives, fireworks. Um, some of your larger fireworks are classified as explosives. 
and uh, we go and recover those and, and dispose of those safely for the, uh, for the community in this area. All right, the next piece of equipment that I'm gonna show you is our uh, Polaris Ranger. Uh, it's a side-by-side. -side. Um, we live in a rural area with a lot of desert and we need to be able to get into remote places. Uh, this has come in handy when we've uh, gone out to Red Valley, Arizona uh, to recover blasting caps. They're doing a uranium mine remediation project out there for the federal government and every once in a while they'll come across um, explosives in that area that have been lost or left behind. Uh, so all of our bomb squad equipment is housed here at Fire Station 6. Um, you may be wondering why do we house our equipment at a fire station. Uh, this is the newest fire station that was built for the city of Farmington and in the planning they actually built an extra set of bays on uh, specifically for our equipment. In a moment here I'll show you some of our larger trucks and our other equipment that we um, house in here and why we needed this extra room. Uh, we also partner with the fire department uh, for hazardous materials um, calls so it's a it's a logical partnership with the fire department of why our stuff is housed here. All right, so this is our large bomb truck. Again, this was purchased with federal grant money. Uh, we had it designed specifically uh, for our bomb squad needs. Uh, we have an equipment lift here that our large robot goes on. Uh, it stores in the bay back here in the area. Uh, we have uh, x-ray equipment that we keep stored in here along with our many other tools that we utilize for all the different uh, types of calls that we go on. Uh, we do have a satellite TV on here so that we can stay connected to real-time news. And uh, our other truck here, and this is like I'm saying why we need uh, a lot of space to be able to house our stuff. Um, we have another Ford F-250 that is our quick response vehicle that we keep our smaller robot on. Okay, one of the, I guess we call it the neatest questions I get about our robot is I've actually had kids ask, what does our robot eat? Okay, so our robot eats electricity. It's a, it's a battery powered 24 volt uh, electric system and we're getting ready to swap out the batteries here uh, so that it can uh, it can be well fed. 